The U.S. stealth drone called Scarab in 1980s. Scaled Composites, an aviation company well known for its advanced and novel designs, and now a division of Northrop Grumman, quietly posted a series of previously unreleased images online of a stealthy reconnaissance drone called the Scarab. Decades earlier, Scaled had built an initial batch of the unmanned aircraft on behalf of what was then Teleton Ryan Aeronautical, who, in turn, sold them to just one customer, Egypt in 1980. Teleton Ryan, which itself became part of Northrop Grumman in 1999, developed the jet-powered, ground-launched Scarab, specifically to meet Egyptian requirements in the early 1980s. Scarab could have been attractive to the Egyptians as it would have provided an advanced aerial reconnaissance tool that would have been highly survivable against most, if not all of the air defense threats in the broader Middle East region at the time. This means that it could collect details imagery of enemy positions without the need for air superiority to ensure its survival. The Scarab was definitely a state-of-the-art design at the time with a purpose-built stealth shape. Teleton Ryan already had years of experience experimenting with stealthier drone designs for the U.S. Air Force, including the AQM-91 Firefly, also known as Compass Arrow. The Scarab unmanned aircraft proved extremely durable, as well. This was in part a result of the need for the drone to survive being repeatedly blasted into the air from a ground-based launcher using a modified rocket booster from a Harpoon anti-ship missile. The 18,000-pound thrust launch rocket motor exploded at launch and pitched the vehicle approximately 10 feet vertically into the air. After blasting off from its launcher, Scarab could reach a top speed of nearly 650 miles per hour and an altitude of up to 40,000 feet, depending on its predetermined altitude and mission profile, and could carry a payload of more than 250 pounds over a total distance of 1,400 miles. When it returned to base, its small jet engine would cut out and a parachute would deploy. The drone would eventually sail down to Earth, landing on a set of inflatable airbags hidden inside the fuselage and wings. The entire system included a truck-mounted ground control station and power generation system that also served as the prime mover for the trailer-mounted launcher, but also had some off-road capability. A complete system with a scarab on the launcher was also small enough to fit inside a C-130 cargo plane. As delivered, the scarabs could carry either a KS-153A optical camera or a Laurel D-500 infrared laser camera system. The latter used the laser for infrared illumination, allowing the camera to capture images at night. Both cameras, however, employed wet film that required processing after the mission was over. The drone could not transmit any imagery back to base during flight. Scaled Composites built a total of 29 scarabs for Teledon Ryan, which shipped them to Egypt and trained members of the Egyptian Air Force how to fly them. Teleton Ryan built another 30 scarabs independently as a second run and delivered those to Egypt as well. It was the first time Teleton Ryan had exported an unmanned aircraft of any kind, which the U.S. military had not adopted. Of the 59 scarab drones the Egyptians received, they reportedly never even ungrated 50 of them, according to Scaled. The nine operational examples did fly some 65 operational missions, but there's no information about what areas they flew over or for what purpose. The exact status of the remaining scarabs is unclear. As of the late 1990s, Teleton Ryan was still actively supporting the program in Egypt. After Northrop Grumman bought the firm in 1999, it took over that support contract. At this point, the scarabs, many of which may have been sitting in storage for decades, may be too expensive and impractical to modernize and put to more active use. 
the scarab's story may end in relative obscurity. Of course, there's always the chance that someone might uncover one of them in the future and hopefully send it to a museum. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe.